Hello everyone and welcome to the overview of the British forces in Company of Heroes 2. I'm Seth Kipris, your loyal and entertaining guide. So about the faction itself, it was released on September the 3rd and I played for a while to get down the basics. And in this video we will cover each individual unit and explain the purposes and abilities of that unit. So the first unit that we are going to start with is the infantry section. Costing 280 manpower and being 4 men strong, the infantry section forms the backbone of the British army. It gets an increase in rate of fire when it is in light or heavy cover, so it is in your best interest to protect your boys by placing them behind bushes or walls or sandbags, so you can defeat your enemies easily that way. Global upgrades for the infantry section include an increase in squad size by one man, thus bringing the squad size to five, and the Mills Grenade, which costs 25 munitions to throw, making it the cheapest but also the weakest frag grenade in the whole game. Historically, it makes sense, since this is a grenade from World War I and it hasn't seen much improvements. If you unlock the weapons rack, you can equip the section with bread and light machine guns for 60 munitions and the Piat for 40 munitions. The Bren makes them better at beating the infantry, while the Piat gives them an advantage against vehicles. Uh, yes, vehicles. There's a reason the Piat costs 40 munitions. It's weak, just as history remembers it. It had problems penetrating armor. It is useful for destroying vehicles and light tanks, maybe even medium tanks, provided you attack from the flank or the rear, but otherwise it loses its effectiveness the harder the armor gets. And it's inaccurate, considering it fires like a half mortar, and most of the time it doesn't hit the target due to that fact. For the section itself, you can upgrade them with medical supplies for 30 munitions, or with artillery flares for 40 munitions. The former will enable them to heal themselves and other infantry, regardless if the territory is allied, neutral, or of the enemy. The latter enables them to throw artillery flares for 45 munitions, like a grenade, after which the artillery in your base will bombard the target. You get one when you build the platoon command, and the second when you build the company command post. Overall, a capable unit. Next up we have the Vikers machine gun team. Costing 280 manpower and having 4 men, this unit will do the usual duties expected of a heavy machine gun team, like holding out in a building and suppressing infantry, protecting ball necks and crowd controlling. It has a decent rate of fire, decent damage and good accuracy. Notice how I said decent. Just like the Mills Grenade, this is a World War I weapon, so it isn't as great as the other machine guns of other factions. The Maxim at least has a short setup time, the Vikers has the art of MG42, but not the rate of fire and damage of one. It does get an increase in range with level 1 veterancy if you put it in a building, so it has that going for it, which is nice. The third unit you can call from the HQ is the Universal Carrier. It costs 210 manpower and 15 fuel. It can carry one squad, but the squad can't fire from the transport. You can upgrade the carrier with a Vikers K machine gun for 60 munitions to improve its firepower or a Wasp flamethrower for 90 munitions to clear out buildings. The Wasp has a good range for a flamethrower and the Vikers K machine gun can suppress infantry for 10 munitions on designated target. In the platoon command post you can deploy Royal Engineers, 55 caliber armor piercing snipers and an ordnance QF. 6 pounder AT gun, QF probably standing for quick firing. The Royal Engineers cost 210 manpower and come equipped with stand submachine guns, making them good for short range engagements. They can place mines, razor wire, various types of defenses and can remove cover or obstacles with a small demolitions charge. The charge costs nothing and serves only for that purpose. I haven't seen an instance in which the charge killed a unit. Up next is the 55 caliber armor piercing sniper, or as I like to call him in a joking manner, Captain McMillan. Come on, look at Call of Duty 4 and all that, he has that camo uniform, he has a sniper rifle and he speaks in a Scottish accent. Well, 
poor joke aside, this unit costs 360 manpower and is capable of engaging both infantry and light vehicles with no problem. It can assist with other units in attacking medium armor, but that's about it. For 30 munitions it can use the critical shot ability to stun an armored target. When it reaches level 1 veterancy it can throw artillery flares, just like the infantry section. The Ordnance QF 6 pounder AT gun comes at 280 manpower and can engage armor. At veterancy 1 it gets rapid maneuvers, which makes the crew move faster for no cost at all. The gun will rotate and move faster and the ability lasts for 20 seconds. If you choose to unlock the AEC Mark III 75mm armored car, or armored car in short, you can deploy it for 340 manpower and 60 field. It can deploy smoke for 30 munitions to retreat without retribution. Its 75mm gun can tackle infantry vehicles and even light tanks. At Veteran C1 you can use the target tread ability to slow down or even immobilize the target vehicle for 30 munitions. A solid unit for a good price, good for the early offensive. In the company command post you can order in medium and heavy armor. The Centaur AA Mark II cruiser tank costs 320 manpower and 100 fuel and it is equipped for anti-infantry and anti-aircraft duty. At level 1 veterans it can use the strafing run ability for 50 munitions on target. The Cromwell Mark IV cruiser tank costs 340 manpower and 110 fuel and serves as the medium tank of the British forces. You can upgrade it with a tank commander for 25 munitions, which will increase the line of sight, detect stealth units, improve accuracy and the tank will gain more experience. The Cromwell can go against other medium tanks, light tanks and vehicles and support infantry. The Sherman Firefly costs 440 manpower and 155 fuel and it's the best mobile anti-tank weapon the British have. You can upgrade it with a tank commander and 60 pound tulip rockets that cost 50 munitions to upgrade. These rockets are good against stationary targets and tanks, inflicting a good amount of damage. Each use of the rockets costs 100 munitions, so make sure you have a steady supply of munitions. It fires two rockets that can go through buildings. The tank itself has good armor and packs a punch. It is less effective against infantry with anti-tank weapons since the gun was made to punch through armor, not inflict area damage. Depending on the tech tree you choose, you may deploy a Churchill Mark 7 infantry tank or a Comet tank. The Churchill Mark 7 infantry tank or heavy Churchill is a tank that costs 540 manpower and 150 fuel. It is designed to spearhead assaults and support the infantry. It has heavy armor and can go toe to toe with some heavy armor. It can use infantry support smoke to provide a smoke screen for infantry behind it, enabling a safe advance. It can also use the crew's self defense ability to throw a grenade from the hatch to eliminate infantry and anti tank gun crews. Costs 20 munitions. Strong armor and a strong punch in one package with reasonable price attached to it. The Comet tank costs 500 manpower and 165 fuel. It is effective against infantry and tanks. It can be upgraded with a tank commander for 25 munitions. For abilities it can throw a grenade to eliminate infantry and fire a smoke shell to provide smoke screen. At veterancy level 1 the smoke shell is filled with phosphorus that damages and burns infantry. The tank has good speed and is all around good. These were all the units of the British forces, no commander specific units were shown here. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.